What is up YouTube and welcome to this 365 days this day review and breakdown. The first movie drew heavy comparisons to Fifty Shades of Grey but was vastly kinkier and I am neutral to say that this sequel is basically pure sex with a tiny little bit of plot. The last movie ended with Laura under attack from a rival mafia family of Massimos and she and Olga only knew that she was pregnant. The question remained, what happens next? The movie glosses over that in the first five minutes. At Laura's wedding, after she's getting a good old rogering, we learn that she'd lost the baby, and that's the last we hear of that until the end, because I guess that'd be far too much plot and characterization for anyone in this movie. Olga also starts dating and then gets engaged to Dominique, who is the friend and colleague of Massimo and he even has less of a presence than last movie but we get some ridiculously raunchy sex scenes including a shot of Laura asking for a golf ball up her snatch well, I guess that's how they get them up there in those sexy shows in Amsterdam. But she's unhappy after the honeymoon that she is being reduced to a wife just once more. Who knew that the guy who would kidnap a woman and force her to spend a year with him to fall in love would let her do anything else than be an object? She spills the tea to the gardener Nacho, who is actually there to bring Laura to Sicily, as he is the son of a crime boss who's angry at Massimo for expanding his criminal empire and wishes to replace Massimo with his twin brother. Yes, wasn't mentioned in the first movie at all, and we don't know that Massimo has a brother until this is revealed in Pillow Talk, but they never explain it's a twin brother, which makes the scenes with him plotting with Anna very, very weird. Now, Massimo is a controlling person and he pushes Laura to argue with him at a party and she sees what she thinks is her husband go off with his ex-lover to absolutely get pounded and catches them doing it. But it's actually Adriano, the brother of Massimo, to push her towards Nacho, who just happens to be driving around randomly at night at that exact moment. She's met him for five minutes but she is DTF with the Nacho. Yes, she's down for it. Now, to well, she doesn't decide to go back to her parents, her best friend, but she decides to go with a stranger. And I love how Massimo can't find her. Surely he's like, wait a minute, where's the gardener? She ends up getting close to him and Anna as a furious she went with Nacho as they went with their own plans despite working with Nacho's dad. And Massimo ends or destroys an assassin after they do it. He's like, unfortunately, he's not dead. I, I mean, you could have just killed him. <laughs> but, but anyway, they go to meet his father and uh, Massimo arrives as the plan and threat is laid bare like most of the movie. But Anna and Adriano have taken Laura tricking the boss. I like how Massimo knew that Anna was involved early and they just completely dropped that plot line for no reason because he knew what was going on, sort of. He knew she was involved. Why didn't he have someone follow her? He would have found, my God, this film is awful. The two lovers of Laura head to save her. Massimo has been absolutely cucked, but Nacho has fallen in love with her. Instantly, I... I mean, she's, she's fit, but not enough for me to, you know, kidnap her. To Anyway, I love how Adriano was in exile and just his whole thing is that he was just born a few minutes later, making him bitter. What a loose reason to do all of this insane shit. Anna putting together a Sinister Six 365 is just hilarious. Laura is shot, as is Anna, while Adriano is too. They're killed, but it's left open-ended if Laura died. But Nacho gives in and allows Laura to stay with Massimo because she ran towards him, I presume. But this movie is just absolutely wild. It is not a good movie. I ha I could not stop laughing at, at the editing, the acting. The acting somehow gets worse as the movie goes on. I don't know how. But that was just a short video there for you to, to explain the plot of 365 Days This Day. Anyway, don't know why they didn't call it 366 
Wait, there's only 365 days. This movie's rocked my brain. I'm going to go. Right, I'm going to play some Elden Ring. I'll see you later. Goodbye.